Okay, so what we have here is what I'm calling the 100 year motor. And I really have no idea if this motor will run 100 years, but I'm trying to design something that without any external uh, maintenance, etc., can just sit on a shelf and run year after year. Now there are some points on this particular one that may fail uh, in the future. One of them is the reed switch. I'm using a reed switch on this, and that's because I can really get my uh, microamp draw down to almost nothing with the reed switch arrangement. So the reed switch is one particular point that may fail on it in the future. I also have a germanium diode here, um, and this is just the regular easy spin arrangement. Instead of coming to the capacitor, I've come to the 12 volt crystal cell uh, pack down here. But uh, yeah, a couple points where we may experience some failure. I'll uh, open this up, show you the inside, and point out one other unknown variable in this particular unit. Okay, so this particular unit can be taken completely apart and uh, I've got these little uh, bent wire hooks on it that let me access completely down under the unit and all the way to the crystal cell pack. Now one of the things I want to point out is these uh, crystal cells have magnesium rods from Amazon and they're sacrificial uh, rods for hot water heaters and the purity of magnesium on these rods is not nearly as high from what I've been reading online from other experimenters as the magnesium rods I've gotten off eBay that are very high purity. So that's one potential uh, point for failure um, in the future for this. Okay, so let's look at the current draw on this motor. You can see that this particular motor is drawing between two to three microamps. And that's a pretty good run speed for that uh, current draw. That's going to be really important if you're trying to build a motor to run uh, for years. The little motor that I've got running on my live video feed, that particular motor is using a dancing solar flower uh, circuit board as its driver. And that particular circuit pulls a whole lot more uh, microamps than uh, this setup here. Now, it does not use a reed switch, so it may have gr much l greater longevity, and I may need to go to a circuit like that in the future if I get reed switch failure with this setup. But I really, really like the uh, two to three microamp current draw for a setup like this. And that's going to be key to allowing something like this to run year after year. And if your goal is to try to create a motor that runs for 100 years without any interference, that's definitely something that will need to be looked at. Okay, so I've connected my digital multimeter to do a uh, comparison to this one to see if this is calibrated correctly. And you can see here that the uh, readings match up perfectly. This is a reading right at three microamps. Okay, so with this super low current draw, I have very high hopes for this motor. And you know what? If it doesn't make it anywhere near 100 years, I'm still going to enjoy learning uh, from the process. You know, sometimes it's good to set an outlandish goal, shoot for it, and uh, it will really help you learn a lot because you can discover where the failure points were at and what to do in the future to improve it. So anyway, I'm going to close this up. We'll put it on the shelf, and I'll keep you all updated on its uh, future progress. Okay, be sure to check out the video description for links on how to build all this stuff. I'll include links to laserhacker.com on building the crystal cell, the easy spin motor. And I'm also, I also want to include a link to a thread at laserhacker.com forum where Maglovin built an excellent replica of this uh, motor. It's on a larger scale. It's really impressive. So check all that out and uh, yeah, let's all keep experimenting.